What's up? This is Matt Brown, back with some more hardware hacking content. I know I've been out for a while, but appreciate everyone who has been uh, subscribing in the meantime, giving me good feedback. I had some things going on in my life. I moved, so you'll notice the new space around me. Hopefully we'll be getting some upgrades to the lab uh, that will come along with this space. Uh, and I also had some unexpected things happen. I got invited to a Hacker One live hacking event and managed to come away with the win. I'll probably do a whole uh, video discussing that, but uh, suffice it to say, I've been busy with some other stuff, uh, but I'm really excited to get back to uh, some YouTube content, hacking on devices, and today I was running into an issue. Uh, I made some mistakes and thought this would be a great opportunity to throw together a video, so I wanna take you over to the desk and uh, show you what I'm looking at. So here's a device I pulled from eWaste and was just doing some hardware hacking on. And I'm gonna kind of walk through a problem that I encountered uh, due to my own stupidity. So um, like we've done in other videos, not gonna go into, into it in too much detail today, but there is a UR interface that had the pins already there populated on the board, uh, nice and accessible. Uh, didn't even have to solder that on. Um, so figured out uh, TX, RX, and ground and got connected up. No problem to that UR interface. With that, I started to look around. I uh, couldn't get a, a shell, and so I wanted to dump the firmware. There was maybe a path to dumping that that I'll show you on the UR interface. But luckily, the first thing I did before I messed around too much is I did uh, desolder uh, this chip here, uh, it's a 16-pin SOP uh, SPI flash chip, and read the contents with my universal programmer over here. And so let me let me just show you that chip under the microscope really fast. And so uh, here you go. It's just uh, nothing to write home about. Just a 16-pin uh, SOP package chip and so I pulled that off I read it out I put the chip back on and went about my business and so I, I did some firmware analysis on that but this is what uh, this is where it comes to the problem I encountered and so I'm actually going to swap over uh, to my computer and show you uh, the UART interface so on this UART interface let me go ahead over here and just type help. This is not this is not your standard U-boot environment, or at least if it is, it is an extremely limited one. Uh, a lot of the standard U-boot uh, commands are not present here. Um, like I mentioned, there probably is a way to dump the entire flash contents from here using this SPI tool. Um, type like help SPI and there's you know ways that I can say SPI read at address zero, let's say like you know 16 bytes, and it will give me that data, and I could parse that, but I already dumped uh, the flash from the chip, so so then I was just looking around at other commands, and this is you know just me not reading enough and not thinking before acting, so this command right here, like oh this seems kind of innocuous, right? Well, let me scroll up in my history and uh, show you what happened. So apparently this, this test command uh, actually does something quite detrimental to the device. So, oh no, it's, it's, it's before this boot. It's right here. So uh, I, knew, I knew this was bad right off the bat when I ran the command and then right away it said saving environment to SPI flash and then erasing SPI flash. So it basically just overwrote whatever was on the flash chip with something that was not the main operating system, the Linux environment that this device is supposed to be running. So uh, yeah, so when I <laughs> rebooted the device, it just rebooted into this uh, looping over some uh, something in the bootloader. It clearly can't boot and we had a problem. So then I went over to my desk and I thought that things were, uh, things were lost. Now I did 
take that firmware dump. And so we will come back to that in a minute when we're discussing this. So I wanna show you some tips and tricks when using this reader that I encountered. So usually I use a socket like this uh, to plug. So you desolder this chip, you put it into this socket, and then this socket clamps down on the chip. And that worked fine when I read the firmware, but for whatever reason, that must have been like a one in a million shot at successfully interacting with this chip using this socket. Because when I tried to recover, so I had the firmware read on my computer, and I tried to write it back to the chip, this was not working to save my life. And so I can actually, I'll actually show you uh, as best I can in the software interface what that looks like. So we'll pop back to my screen here. And over here, I've got the uh, XG Pro for the XGeku Universal Programmer device. Um, uh, here you'll see where I was finally relieved to successfully write to Flash. But when, the, uh, uh, oh yeah, so there's a couple, there's a couple tips and tricks here. One, uh, I'm going to show you physically how I, how I was able to do that with the Universal Programmer. But one thing that was causing me a lot of problems was this erase before. So it was, it was failing during an erase operation of the chip. And so I found that by deselecting this, deselecting this verify after, and then, and the skip blank uh, field here when programming the chip, that for some reason helped me out a lot. And so, uh, so that was one of the things that I saw. Oh, I bet I, I, bet I can do this because there's nothing in the chip. So like I, if I go here and it tells me, okay, it tells me this chip is supposed to be down here at the bottom of the reader in those bottom 16 pins, eight on each side of the reader. Yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll get something that looks exactly like this. It will fail to detect a connection to the chip uh, at these different pin locations. And using, so I'll pop back to my desk and show you so at some point I switched to using this and I would be pressing with my finger on like the bottom or the top of this and then clicking program again inside the software. And what I would observe when I would do that, so let's say I would push on the bottom part of the chip, like right? really hold the chip on the bottom part of these pads. What I would see in my software was these red X's on the bottom would go away, but maybe they would like appear on the top, right? So it was clearly indicating that it couldn't, it, it was having issues making all 16 connections simultaneously with the chip. And this is when I wasn't soldering this on. And so what ended up working in the end is uh, you can kind of almost see that there's some shiny, you know, fresh solder. I actually did take this adapter and I, I, I put solder on it, took this chip off, soldered it onto this adapter, and placed this like so. Oh, yeah, let me hold that, hold that up. Let me slide that in. And then you push that forward. And that created the solid connection I needed to actually successfully program the chip. Again, this in theory should work, but sometimes these ones that are really annoying because you have to you have to get another thing messy with solder and flux. Uh, and then you have to chip it back off of this and then onto the board. Uh, but sometimes that does help you uh, at the end of the day get that successful read that you need to get from the chip, uh, or in this case, a write, because I was dumb and executed some random command into bootloader without Googling what it did. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, like I said, I've got more content coming down the pipeline that I think you're really going to like. 
I've got some other cool devices uh, that I've pulled out of some e-waste bins. Uh, that'll be uh, some fun content. And we'll also talk about uh, my time at the HackerOne Live Hacking event. So uh, with that, have a good day.